即系连埋当介绍埋个 ，OK。O K， 你话开始又Double pop trace 二三，一二三一二三一二三一二三一二三一二三一二三一二三。For the second section, we have Miss Choi Ching Lam and Mr. Kim Fong from the Julia language community to bring us the topic Julia. Looks like Python, feel like lips, runs like C or Fortran. Julia is a fast, dynamic, open source, easy to use programming language designed to solve the two language problem. In the following talk, Ching Lan and Kim are going to give us an overview of the strength and applications of Julia, as well as cover its basic syntax. So Julia was designed to solve two language as in So what this is is that lots of languages are either designed to performant or pivot. So um, you, on the one hand, you have things like C, and um, on the other hand, you have very easy syntax. So um, it's not very practical because when you are trying to
My name is Kim. My name, My name is. is, is, is. They were here. Do you think that is designed, designed to solve the two languages? Language. So, so, what, what is, is this? this? Right. So, um, so, so languages are often designed, designed to be either performant or productive. So, 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 on the one, the one hand, you have languages, languages and, on and on the other hand, hand you would have Python. So, C is obviously fast, and whereas Python is like. That's very, very easy, easy. So, so, um, you can write a lot of code in a very productive, productive, productive but, but maybe, maybe not with but, but if, if you, you have, have a project, project where you want, want to build something some, some, some fast and, and have it run, it's, it's very hard to use, it's very hard to program because you would, if you were using Python, you would keep it as, and then you would have to integrate other languages to your project, which isn't very so Julia was designed to solve this by introducing a performant yet productive language. So, um, so um, as seen from here, um, as, um, the, there was a benchmark um, of languages. So as you can see, Julia performs well in a lot of areas such as um, iteration and benchmarks. Julia is a fast open source language that is high performance and very easy to use. As you can see, um, here we have the Python code and Julia code side by side, and you can see that they look very similar. The only differences mainly are that for Python, when you're creating a function, you use the word def, um, but for Julia, you use the word function. Also, in Julia, there is no colon, and instead, for for loops and functions, we have the word end, to signify that the function or loop has ended. Also, Julia is a dynamic programming language like many others, including Python and Java, and it's mainly used for numerical and scientific computing. It also adopts multiple dispatch as its paradigm, but despite everything, it's also very effective for general purpose computing. Advantage. Another advantage of Julia is its community and its packaging system. So uh, the Julia, Julia community is growing exponentially with um, millions of downloads. And uh, also there are a lot of packages being developed for it um, progressively, um, such as the differential equations, which is very well uh, developed already. And it's used by a lot of companies. And it also has a dedicated learning platform, Julia Academy, where um, the experts in Julia teach um, data science in Julia um, and basic, etc. Um, as well as um, the Julia community is very active and helpful on discourse as well as Slack. So as, as mentioned in the previous slide, there are more than 10,000 companies that are currently using Julia. And these are just some examples of big names that you guys might know. If you want more details about this, you can go to juliacomputing.com slash case slash studies. Julia has also been used in academia. So um, Julia was actually invented by researchers from UC Santa Barbara as well as MIT. So um, it's been used there and taught there as well as in other um, institutions, institutions around the world. So Julia... Um, is used mainly for scientific computing, and this is just one example of how this um, is used in academia. So, Galipsy simulations in system biology is one of the examples. And here, we, this is basically used to um, discover drugs, and we use the Julia package Galipsy.jl, and you can see from the table below that the Julia package is 745 times faster than R, which is normally used in statistics. 
Another notable case study would be RLE vectors.jl, which stands for run length coded vectors. So um, in genome, generate a lot of data, like billions of data. Um, there really is a need to um, find a way to efficiently store um, these data. So um, for run length encoding through this message, uh, it does that very efficiently, um, up to 65,000 times faster than R. Um, so um, it's, very, it's a very useful path. So other than the two packages mentioned just now, there are tons of other packages that come with Julia pre-installed when you download it. So some of the areas that they might fall in include differential equations, graph processing, data science, image processing, deep learning, operations research, signal processing, computational biology, and a lot more. But just for you guys to get a basic understanding of how Julia works and more about uh, the language itself, um, we're just going to run through the, the basics of Julia really before moving on to more demonstration. So here we have um, a, a Jupyter notebook. Um, with some Julia code on, and I, I, I strongly recommend you guys get it if you guys haven't already. And here we have some really basic functions and um, structures that we're going to go through. So first of all, we have printing. So mostly for new programmers, and if, you, if you're new to Julia as well, the first thing you might want to try is pro, uh, printing. But if you know Python, um, the function is called print. And in Julia, it's basically really similar. All we have to add is ln uh, after print. So it stands for line. So if you do print ln with brackets and then the string, um, then you can get hello world. So if we run that, then we, you can see that we have hello world. Now variable types. Basically, um, the variables are um, used, used to store, to store different data, data and we have different types of data. data. So, so the first type of data is going to be an integer, integer and if we just store that in, in the variable called number, number um, then, then whenever, whenever you need to access it, you can just type number in and you get it. So if you want to check what type it is, then you can just do type of and it'll be really quick. Also, also, unlike some of the other languages, you don't need to say integer number. So you don't need to tell the computer that it's an integer because it knows itself. And another example is if I create an, a, a new variable called pi, um, and it shows that it's a float. Now, you might notice that for the previous one, I used pi, P-I-I, -I, instead of pi. And that's because if, if you do pi, um, Julia comes with the constant itself, which is the irrational number used to calculate areas and diameters of the circle. And finally, we also have strings. So we can also do really basic math, and I'm not going to get into more details about this other than just basic arithmetic. So we have some pluses, some divisions, some powers, as well as modulus. String interpolation is basically when you want to add some data into a string. So at the bottom, we have the piece of string I'm going to use, but sometimes you don't know exactly what the name or age, and it could change with everyone. So here I have Sam and age stored inside. So if I just run this, it's going to automatically detect that it's Sam and he's 16. Other data structures we also have in Julia are dictionaries and arrays. Dictionaries are basically pieces of data where you can name the, the big thing, and then inside you can also have their own little piece of data, and you can store all of that inside one variable. So if I have here, then I can have Jenny and her number, and Jimmy and his number as well. And if you add, if, if, if you do the following, then you can also add a new piece of data. So when you check that the new dictionary has now three pieces of data instead of two. So in order to remove a piece of data, you can just do up with an exclamation mark, and that removes the piece of data. And I just do that, and then now we only have two.
Now moving on to arrays, when we do an array, you can just use square brackets, and inside you can have different types of data. But unlike dictionaries, you don't actually have a big thing. You just push and then you can add a new friend and then likewise same dictionaries you can just remove a friend the last and they're really helpful in scientific computing so now we have two different types of loops, and you probably know this already, but we have while loops and for loops, and as mentioned before, um, the, the syntax isn't that much different other than that there is an end, but I'm just going to quickly run through this um, in case you don't know. So here we have n equals zero, and basically it tells you while n is small than 10, then for, for, you update the n with uh, the number one larger, one larger than, than the previous, previous number, number, and you print it, 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 it until, until you get, get to the end. end. And then every time, you just return the end, and then you basically have a list of numbers. Now, for for loop, it's basically a lot easier because you can just do for n in all the numbers 1 to 10, you just print the end, and it continues to go up automatically. So for conditionals, we have Basically, so if I want to do, if I want to compare two different variables, you can just do x and y, and I can just type in some numbers. So for example, I'm going to type in 16 and 12, and if if this this program basically, if x is bigger than y, then it will return x, otherwise it will return y. So this basically shows the biggest number out of the two. So if we run this, um, you, should you should be able, able to, get to get 16, 16 but the reason why it didn't, um, it said it wasn't defined is because I didn't run the previous thing. So now we get 16. Um, but also if you want to do it quickly and um, there's this, Julia has this really special thing called ter ternary operator and it does the same thing in only one line. Finally, we have functions. So most of the things above are functions including the print ln function. And if you want to define your own function, you can use the word function, and then type in the function name, and then you type all the body content, and then at the end, you type end. So for example, if I want a function that creates um, the square of a number, you just do, if I just create that, and then you can type in the thing you want to square, and then you get the square number. Now, you can also do the same thing in only one line, but you, you, instead of everything, you just do the function name equals the body. So if I want to create exactly the same function, I'm going to call it g x. And then if we run that, we also get the same thing. So I think that wraps the, the basic tutorial. And now we're going to move on to uh, Ching Lam's user structure. So, um, in a lot of languages, you either get user divide. Um, a lot of languages only provide standard types, not uh, user defined types. This is not the case with Julia. So. So, um, in Julia, you can have user defined types as well as standard types. So, um, in particular, so this is very useful, especially given the multiple dispatch um, paradigm of Julia. So, um, for example, here um, in this code, um, it's about the multiple dispatch and custom types in Julia. So, this is done by, so here I define an abstract type called language, and I construct uh, the Julia object under a language. And it's very easy, I have a name.
something in the custom that you would have to do. Um, you would have to use classes and options to do. Uh, and that was a little bit tedious. Whereas for Julia, you can easily define custom types using um, struct uh, constructors. So here I define my like, abstract type language, and I can construct an object called um, Julia and with the attribute name and so on. Uh, I've been in this until. And um, these are all objects um, um, of the language. So, so uh, I also, also define a function called compare, compare, compare with the method speed. speed. So it, it, it sets two inputs which are of the language type. type. And, 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 and so, so basically, so basically when, 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 um, so what so this means is that for the compare function, if you get if you get two inputs of the language type, the speed method attaches on these on these types of the following. So at a time. Find my like, like, how it just like, is. Um, yes, yes, yes. So let's let's this. So here I define a Julia, well, a Julia object, and get 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 name, and I compare them with the dispatches and give give me give me a list up. So as you can see, Julia is very easy to find your own list. Now we're, now we're going, going to move, move on, on to demos, demos and we're going to talk about, about data, data visualization, person of bad bot lib, and, and, and bot state jail, data, data processing, benchmark of pandas and b.jl, and machine learning frameworks, benchmark of PyTorch and TensorFlow. So first we're going to do the data visualization. So here we have side-by-side comparisons of Python and Julia. So Python has a library called Matplotlib, and it's used for data visualization and processing. And similarly, Julia has a package called
Here we have um, PyTorch. So as you can see, it's like that. Um, and and um, Flux is pretty similar. It's the the syntax is also very easy, um, and they. There, if you, you're familiar with either PyTorch or TensorFlow 2.0, you won't have any difficulty with learning Flux. So uh, basically, you define a chain, uh, a chain, uh, yeah, a Flux chain. So this can be thought of similar, some as similar to um, sequential in um, PyTorch and as well as TensorFlow 2.0. So um, here, the convolution function, you define a three by three kernel as standard, and you. Um, and in terms of channels, you you come after convolution, it, it becomes um, 16 from the, the original one, and you do padding of um, with the one by one kernel, and you use the ReLU activation function. So this is very much um, similar to PyTorch, um, as you can see. So it's very it's very easy for uh, data scientists to adapt to um, Flux from from um, PyTorch. Um, also, it's a, a, a pretty good thing is that like you don't have to you don't have to um, do the forward. So in PyTorch, you would have the forward um, function. Um, yes, to whereas you, you don't need to do that in um, in Flux. So. Um, and the training is also very, they, they also have a lot of um, pre-written operations such as one cold, one hot, and batching is also very easy. And they have a lot of op optimizers such as AMS grad, Adam, um, et cetera. Um, in terms of, uh, so in, so they also have some um, pre, um, some built-in Flux also has some built-in data sets such as Fashion Minist and Minist, etc. So, um, but while benchmarking the performance of PyTorch, TensorFlow, and also Flux on the Fashion Minist data set, they were all pretty similar um, um, using the same model. So, um, it's 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 very it's very much possible to use um, um, to use. Julia for machine learning. So uh, last but not least, um, Julia is very much um, is very good for um, differential equations and scientific computing. So um, uh, so um, there's this ecosystem called differentialequations.jl where um, you provide a lot of solvers for um, things like partial differential equations, uh, stochastic differential equations, etc. So um, so that is the work of Christopher Caucus, which is a very, who is a very, very amazing uh, contributor in Julia. So, um, so I'll show a little bit of that. So um, Lotka Volterra is a uh, first order nonlinear coupled differential equations. Um, it's described as follows. It's basically um, the population change of predator versus prey. And um, yeah, it, it models the growth rates of the populations. So um, as you can see, so what I'm using is like a, a very new and um, a newly developed package in in uh, Julia called Neuronet DefiQ, which is where you solve differential equations using um, deep learning, uh, specifically neural networks. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so here we define the uh, the functions uh, we model the equations as follows um so p1 would be parameter one and u1 would be x u2 would be um would be y so as you can see um julia is one indexed in instead of zero index in python so um yeah you define the initial condition and you use the differential equations uh, the ordinary dif differential equations um package to parse this um, into an ODE problem. And then it's very easy to solve. You can just solve it using um, by considering the initial value, initial condition. So here I define a 
So it's very, it's also very easy as, um, as, as mentioned before to, um, define like a, a neural network. So here I define a pretty large convolutional, pretty complex convolutional uh, neural network. And it's, and then we can just use that to solve, uh, the, that to solve the ODE problem. Might take a while. So ultimately, um, it will plot. Yes. Yeah, so this is the architecture of my network. This will, um, and after it's solved, um, you can use plots.jl to plot the solution. Um, yeah. And also, Julia is a, a language that's very easy to contribute to. So, um, because Julia is mostly written in Julia, so um, as long as you know the basics, it, it's very easy to um, it's very easy to commit to like push some commits and help uh, help with their repos. As you can see, it's training. And all the code used um, in this sharing will be uploaded to um, our GitHub. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial slash um, conference. And also, if you guys want to check out GitHub, um, my GitHub is github.com slash k-i-m-t-t-f-u-n-g mine's just char ching lam ching lam char and um and also if you're interested in julia you can uh, join the slack invite for julia Every, everyone's very active there and last but not least here are some books on learning julia um you can also of course you can refer to some free resources uh, in julia academy so um this is the end of our um talk Thank you so much for tuning in.